Hello there YouTube, Devin here again with another boot review and uh, I expect this one to get a lot of mixed reviews and, and uh, comments because uh, these were in use with a lot of different militaries and there was a lot of uh, love and a lot of hate for these boots. Uh, these are uh, British ammunition boots or uh, combat low boots general service uh, as they're actually called in stock. Uh, these are the newest versions of them, so the ones made post-1995, because they have the smooth leather. All the ones before this would have had uh, pebbled leather to reduce shine. And uh, these were in use with the British military uh, from the 1880s until the 1950s, like the late 1950s, I think. So, um, there's a number of different models in these. They come out in a number of different... Uh, uh, leathers and stuff and we'll explain some of the more famous ones that you guys might be able to find and stuff like that uh, When we get into the history of some of these but first we're gonna talk about these these boots unusual origin story now these boots were designed to be Durable over anything else even over comfort, okay? They were designed to be to be durable and uh, pretty easy to manufacture now, these came out in the 1880s, and they were actually designed by the Munitions Bureau in England at that time, uh, which is weird because most of the procurement and new development for the army came out of, like, the cavalry uh, sectors uh, for the army, but these were designed by, like, the Artillery Corps, like the Munitions, uh, the Ordnance Department, as it would be known in the United States, uh, designed these for the army in the 1800s. And uh, they were good enough to be uh, adopted. Now, these are... Um, they came in a number of different colors, but for the most part, uh, most metals you see were black. Uh, used by the British anyways. Uh, but you will see... Uh, there's some examples with brown pairs. And you'll usually see those come out of, like, hard times. Uh, like, during World War One, you see a lot of pairs in other, other armies, such as, like, the Canadians and everything. Uh, and the Americans using even these until the Americans came out with their trench boot in 1918. Uh, they used ammunition, uh, ammunition boots as they were called. Um, but there was a bunch of different models. Uh, there was ones in black, there's ones in brown. Um, the most common ones would be like the B5 boots. Uh, they were produced during World War One and World War Two, and you could find them in black and brown. Uh, but they don't have a toe cap, and the toe cap was removed in a, uh, in an attempt to save leather, uh, it does reduce some of the durability of the boot, uh, as well as having some, some, some of them have thinner uh, outsoles. This is made out of like sandwiched four layers of leather, and uh, they have clover leaf hobnails and heel plates, as you can see, iron heel plates as well as iron toe plates. Now, the standard uh, is to have 13 clover leaf hobnails uh, on your boot. So, uh, but you'll see uh, a lot of the uh, earlier ones and the ones during the war will, instead of having cloverleaf hobnails, will, will have just round, flat hobnails. Uh, you could also find them with like a cone-type stud, which is like, you see how these have like three longer parts? It'd be like individual one of these. You could find some with cone-type studs on them. Uh, you could see ones that were made by the French uh, that have little round or dome-shaped uh, studs on them. Uh, you see a lot of people that work with uh, like ammunition uh, like artillery and lots of powder and stuff like that, or uh, drivers, like truck drivers, they'll have boots like this, but they won't have the heel plate or the hobnails or the screws or nails or anything in them. They won't have any of the metal on them because uh, for the drivers, the metal would, uh, uh, after lots of use, would uh, wear out the pedals. Uh, the metal on metal would wear out the pedals of the uh uh, trucks and stuff like that and the vehicles it was just uh, really awkward these could catch on stuff especially when you needed to move between brake and gas and everything like that relatively quickly uh, so these would just wear out the uh, pedals faster so you see a lot of the drivers uh, boots without the hobnails but they'll have the toe plate and the heel plate um, you'll see people that work with munitions and ammo they'll have none of this metal stuff because it could create a spark which can cause an explosion so they often just had leather um, or they had uh, wooden hobnails. You could find some that have some some wooden hobnails, uh, some rare examples. So, but uh, these are the new pairs, and uh, 
These have a lot of mixed reviews. A lot of people really, really hated these uh, that wore them. They said they were very, very uncomfortable. Uh, early, early ones. Uh, uh, moisture. Uh, they tended to seep cold. So like if you're on guard duty in the wars. Uh, during the winter, uh, metal conducts temperature very well. So cold would seep through the nails and into your foot. Uh, you could get cold transmission really, really easy as well as like heat transmission. If you're like stepping on hot stuff through a battlefield, like in World War I, where there's lots of burning shit and everything else like that, uh, the heat can get transferred through the nails and into your foot as well, creating burns. Um, they tend to be incredibly uh, uncomfortable because they weren't sized all that well. Like I wear uh, in UK, I wear a size nine and a half, but they don't make these in half sizes. They make them in nine and ten. Uh, nine is too small, so I have to wear a ten and just wear extra pairs of socks if I don't want blisters uh, on these. But I, I use these for an impersonations. Uh, I have a couple of them. It's like when I go out reenacting. I have one pair that I like to keep nice, which is this pair, and then I have one pair that I really beat the shit out of. Um, they're not cheap, uh, but I recommend you get a pair if you want, to, want a nice pair of boots. Uh, as long as you fit in a whole size, uh, they work quite well. Uh, and if you live in the United States, uh, to size these, uh, you want a full size smaller than what you wear in the United States. So, like, I wear a 10.5 in U.S., so I wear a 9.5 in uh, the... UK size. So just remember that. So, but these, um, you can find them with, uh, leather laces, older ones with leather laces. Uh, most of them will have, uh, six eyelets. You can find some examples with seven eyelets, uh, even later, uh, ones, uh, more towards the like, uh, forties and fifties that are taller that have like eight or nine eyelets. So, um, but they're very, very, uh, well-designed boots are very, very durable. There's like triple rows of stitching on everything. They take a polish really, really well, uh, especially if you know how to bully these, uh, which is uh, kind of a secret I learned from a actual uh, person who used to be uh, a guardsman in England uh, showed me how to uh, bully uh, your boots very, very well. Uh, he asked me to keep the, the tips a secret, though, uh, because the guards do theirs a very specific way to get this almost mirror-like shine on them. Uh, but, uh, there are people out there that will be willing to show you, or you can pay for instructions and stuff on that. Um, they're very, very good boots. Uh, they have almost no flex in them. Cause as you can see, the, uh, outsole on them is almost an inch thick. Uh, the heel is almost two inches thick. So, uh, nothing's really going to puncture these. Um, so just expect them to have very, very little flex. Expect them to not have a lot of give. They have a very, very long break in time. But uh, they must have got something right because the British used these in their empire from the 1800s. So they went through all the way through the Zulu Wars, all the way up through the Korean War. So and even uh, some examples of troops wearing them in the Falklands in like the 80s, uh, you can see with the ammo boots on. So it's just something you have to take into consideration. This is a really, really iconic pair of shoes that even the British... Uh, dress shoes look like this uh the royal guards still wear these actually um you'll see you'll see a lot of combat photos with them uh they'll have gaiters uh leather gaiters or canvas gaiters uh that you'll wear that make them more bearable to wear um so there's these boots have a lot of history i don't know if there's a, a pair of footwear out there that has more military history behind it than the british ammunition shoes uh or ammunition boots as they're uh called sometimes so I figured I'd do a video on my pair, and hopefully you guys uh, uh, like this video a lot. Um, I'll probably end up doing... I also have a direct molded sole pair, uh, which is which came after these. They put a rubber sole on them instead of having these big uh, sandwich layers of leather and hobnails. Uh, so I'll probably do a video of those on later. I have like a 1980s pair of direct molded sole ammunition shoes. So I really like low boots over high boots. I'd rather wear low boots and gaiters, uh, personally, because I like the, the ankle flex a little bit more. So that's just my personal opinion. You guys might think differently. So, uh, But please leave a like, leave a comment if you have any stories or history or any opinions on these boots. I would very, very much like to hear about them in the comments. Uh, I know a lot of them are probably going to be pretty horrible stories. I hear a lot of horrible stories about people that had to wear these and stuff like that and how much work you have to go through to take care of them. But that that breeds a certain amount of respect and a certain amount of discipline in the military. And um, 
I like that. I think polishing your shoes is a is a lost art form that needs to be brought back, especially in the military. So thank you so much for watching. Again, I'd very much like to hear your stories and opinions about these boots if you've had any experience with them. And uh, please leave a like if you're into this sort of stuff. Please leave a comment uh, if you have any questions or concerns or suggestions for future videos. And I will do my best to uh, answer them for you. And I will talk to you later. Bye.